a derivative of, of teleotes. Completion. And the whole idea of this is the church is maturing. And Paul said, when that which is perfect is come, when the perfect, the teleos, or the teleos, and telos means completion. When the church matures, God has given the church all these, he's given the apostles special abilities. They can't go around passing out Old Testaments. And the miracles were to prove who Jesus was, and we'll go through some of that in this series. And he's saying the apostles had the ability to raise the dead. I think Peter raised Dorcas, didn't he, from the dead? You'd be bitten by a deadly serpent, bitten by a serpent, and Paul was bitten in Acts 28 by a Mediterranean viper that had these hooked fangs and it hooked on his hand. And I've got a book on snakes and it says those vipers will hook on and just pump that, pump that venom in at breakneck speed and you'll be dead in about 20 minutes. And they said, he's, a, he's done something evil. He must be an evil man. They thought if you, something like that happened to you, you did something really bad wrong, he slung it off in the fire and his hand didn't swell up. And they said, he's a god. Well, the whole purpose of this was so that the church, the church would have infant gifts and the, and the apostles would be sustained until the church matured. Well, by the time we get over to 55 A.D. and 60 A.D., sometime in that time period, 1 Peter was written, the church is starting mature, and Paul is just a few years away from being martyred, and the apostles are dying right and left, and the church is growing up. And he says, the church is maturing, and it's becoming completed. That's really a bad translation. Some Roman Catholic did that, I'll bet you. We bet. Some Catholic did that. Or some dumb Calvinist. And I don't mean predestinationist. Because I believe in predestination. They don't. And then he says, Above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity covereth the multitude of sins. And the Bible says charity is the perfect. Charity is agape. And agape, perfect love, casteth out fear. Completed love. Teleos love. And the bond of perfectness is agape there in the Colossians, the third chapter. So he sang. He sang the church is maturing. But isn't that what he's talking about in the previous verses? Coming out of all of that lasciviousness and revelings and abominable idolatries and not walking after the Gentiles in excess of writing and we're preaching the gospel, we're suffering for it. The completion of all things is at hand. The completion of the church is at hand. It's growing up. And then he says, above all things, have fervent completion. Because charity is the perfect, isn't it? Those are, these are key verses to preterism. Key verses are 1 Peter 4 and 7. And over there in Luke 21, 28 and 31 and 32... And Matthew 24 and 3. Those are verses that preterists use and they pit these things against one another and they, they identify ion with, uh, with the... Uh, I went blank. Generation. generation. They, they identify ion with generation. And generation is feminine gender and ion is, and ion is not. I want you to see this because when we grow up, this has nothing to do with 70 A.D. Nothing. This has to do with the church maturing and growing up. And when we, when we come back and we get into the next chapter, in fact, he's talking about being mature and ministering 
And all down through here, he's talking about in the rest of this chapter, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you because it's going to make you mature and grow up. He talks about suffering all through here. He talks about that if the righteous scarcely be saved. And then when he gets into the last chapter, he's talking about what happens when you become mature. This whole thing is about the maturing of the Gentiles, is what it's talking about. And if there's anybody knew that they hadn't the mature, it was Peter. So God puts it upon his heart and has the Holy Spirit come and has him write these words. I, I know you say, Jim, you've said this before. I can't, I never feel like I've given you a clear understanding of preterism. If I repeat it, you know why I repeat it? Because it's a difficult thing to understand. It's difficult because what we teach makes sense and what they teach don't make sense. Mary will come to me and she'll say, well, why don't you teach that where it makes sense? You can't teach what the liars teach and make sense of it. I'm trying to show you what they're saying and how it's wrong. I don't like preterism. I hate it. It's just another one of those false doctrines that gets people's minds off the truth. Anything that gets you off your maturity, like this chapter is talking about, is, is a lying false doctrine, isn't it? Yes, sir. That's a lying false doctrine to get you away from your maturity. And that's all preterism does to this verse 7 in chapter 4. Let's pray. Father, thank you for truth. Help us to understand this book. Lord, it's, I don't even know how to preach it sometimes. It's so overwhelming to me. Help us to continue this work. Thank you for truth. Seems like sometime I read the Bible, Lord, and I am so overwhelmed by the figures of speech, the way you've laid this out, by the culture of the time. And if we only lived 2,000 years ago in, in a world that spoke this language and had this culture, Lord, it would sure be easier to understand but we don't, Lord, so help us to see it. Lead us to your elect. And God will praise you for all things. In Christ's name, amen. If y'all get this all of a sudden, you're doing better than I am. Huh? Well, R.C. Sproul is one. Huh? Well, he says he's a partial preterist. I, I think he thinks spiritually everything happened in the past. Huh? Which part of it does he not believe? I don't know. R.C. Sproul is a very arrogant man. He's, he's like listening to Mr. Fancy Pants. He likes to use big, big words and that the common man can't understand. Sometimes he'll say things I'm thinking, and I'll look at the radio and say, R.C., truck drivers can't understand that. How are you going to reach them? Well, at least y'all are more learned in preterism. When you hear somebody say this and try to prove it to you, at least you'll know what to say. They're going to tell you and they're going to swear by God in heaven that ion means an age. Even though it's, and it certainly means it sometimes, but it certainly don't mean it all the time.